I've heard I've heard it once that charcuterie is just um, it's just uh, lunchables for adults. <laughs> oh no, that worked. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> hate that. Were you quoting my Twitter? Wait, you just said that. I tweeted, tweeted that, that once. Yeah. I don't think you're the only person that said it. I'm sorry. No, but I'm the one that you would have seen it from. <laughs> You like this a lot more than I, I do. I love it so much. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to Rally Caps. It's a show for artists, entrepreneurs, and everyone in between. I'm Steven. And I'm Eric. And it doesn't have to be anything <laughs> right now. <laughs> that was a good continuity joke. That's fun. People that aren't nice. going to understand it if they don't go back to episode one. No, you need of to this year. Yeah, you want to listen to uh, to episode two oh, of this year. Two? Yes, oh, episode sorry. two, twenty twenty three. Go listen to the intro to that, and you will you'll understand. Get that joke, <laughs> um, Eric. What are we talking about in today's episode, dude? YouTube, YouTube, everything YouTube, uh, on a couple different levels, I think. Yeah, because we got a bunch of different channels to talk about. Yeah, we've been doing it for a while now. Well, you have. You have too. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting there. YouTube. I won't do the soundboard no, again. Yeah, we filled the that. intro with that. I'm sorry. Won't do that again. Did we fill the intro with that? We did. Okay. Don't worry. We did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess we did. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's actually a good jumping off point. How long have you been on YouTube for? Five years. Excellent. I think. Yeah. Five years. And that's been on your main channel? Main channel. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, yeah. So this is actually going into year six, I think, or five complete years into the sixth year. Yeah. Into the sixth year in 2023. Very cool. You focused mainly, broadly speaking, video, photo, tutorials, specifically in the wedding realm. Education. Yeah. 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 For the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To start it off and then started diversifying after maybe two years into it. Into? Testing the waters on finance. Um, I tried a few other things, just mm -hmm. like running is a huge passion of mine. So I like tried a couple running videos, short, like almost mini documentary things. Yep. Uh, like my buddy Austin, uh, when he got out of debt, we did, uh, his story about how he did that. So that was like strictly about money, but that was kind of a mini documentary. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of all the things I did a little bit of music here mm -hmm. and there. And then, yeah, I just landed on, um, mostly filmmaking, Creative entrepreneurship, yep. building a business and sustaining it. Philosophical approach to photo video. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And in the past year, it's been a little more short film, narrative stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's been way less photography, which is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Did a whole series on film photography. Um, I think given the last year we had with doing a full-length, feature-length documentary, mm -hmm. there wasn't much time I had with a stills camera. Like I did stills work. I still shot film on a personal level, but not nearly the same amount mm -hmm. as years past. Yep. And I really want to get into that again this year. Yep. Back to some stills. Mm. That's going to be a future episode. Yeah. They don't know what that is yet. No. But they'll know. Yeah. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> um, cool. I like that we just set that up, considering that probably everyone does understand <laughs> what you do on YouTube yeah. for the most part. But what Unless you YouTube is finding them as a new viewer right now. Hey, if you are, subscribe to the channel. Sure. Like the video. Hang out with us longer. We want you to be here. Okay, why does everybody say that, though? Tell them. Why does everybody tell people to like and subscribe and comment? Because it's good. Like everybody knows now. For, it's good for the algorithm. <laughs> yeah. The, ca the capital A algorithm loves it. Right? Was man. that the right answer? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The life-sucking demon we have to so. call to on the daily <laughs> so you've been doing that everything. ugly <laughs> sob I'll punch it in the neck i didn't know the algorithm had a neck yeah and oh. i'm gonna punch it well anyway yeah so <laughs> yeah uh, i'm bouncing back from that dark place <laughs> um so that, that recovered what you just did five years going on six this year you're branching out into something new right now yeah. on youtube uh-huh do you want to give people an idea of what that is? Yeah, running. 
<laughs> All right, you heard it here All first. Right. That's it. It's See you running. guys. Take care. He's running YouTube. <laughs> it's a running channel. It's about mostly about marathon running. Been getting into that for as long as I've been on YouTube. Yep. But I've never really made videos about it. Haven't really talked about it too much at all. It's just kind of been my hobby. And I really struggled with making videos about running because it was my hobby and didn't want to ruin something that I love because I have to cater to an algorithm yep. to do my hobby. So I didn't make stuff about it for a while. I started it in 2020 with you. <laughs> the first video was with you, if oh you remember. Gosh. That's right. That was at the uh, the track at my alma mater. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and I was running a mile as fast as I could that day. You filmed it, mm -hmm. and I introduced that channel, made a few more videos that year because mm -hmm. I had more time in 2020, and then things started to pick up and get more busy in 21 and just kind of abandoned it because it didn't really seem like it was worth pursuing at that time. I forgot you started it that long ago. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. And then took a two-year break. <laughs> And then started it again. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool that you can do that. Yeah. But the, the motivation behind it, I'm actually currently right now filming a video today about that. So it'll already be out. That video will already be out by the time this episode's out. Mm -hmm. So just breaking down, considering if you're, if, you're, if you're a filmmaker, a creative, maybe even considering starting a channel on something that isn't filmmaking or creative at its core. Mm. Uh, I think a lot of people just assume that they have to do that, which isn't wrong. It just is very competitive. Like to do something creative. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything in the creative realm, whether it's music, photo, video. I don't really know what designer animation really looks like on YouTube. Yep. Smaller niche, but yeah. I feel like a lot of the like traditional creative things inherently have really good content in that niche already. So my the whole challenge in that video is how can you take skills that you do have and apply them to a completely different genre, completely different niche, and stand out like crazy mm -hmm. within that world. And that's what I'm navigating right now, which is really, really cool because I hired Shua, my full-time editor, summer of 22, mm -hmm. and... Through the fall, I ran Chicago Marathon, New York City Marathon, and having run next to one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Michael Ko, goes by Kofuzi, at Grandma's Marathon back in June up in Minnesota. He put me in that vlog. I felt like I really wanted a video from that day, but was bummed that I didn't really record anything. I remember that morning I was like filming stuff on my phone. I was like, maybe I'll throw this on the running channel again eventually, and then never made anything. And then being in that vlog just was like, I have to film the races in the fall. Like, I just want to, especially now that we're in this documentary. Mm -hmm. I'm back in the running world. I just want to try it and see what happens. So we took a stab at it September, October, and those videos started to gain a lot of traction. And now we're just like full-blown in it with documenting the beginning of this year with my... Uh, my training block for my April marathon. And it's been going really, really well on the platform as far as numbers go. So, Sick. yeah, but yeah, it's, I don't want that to be the only thing. Like that's not, that's not the end all be all. And I think, I think this conversation on the internet regarding YouTube tends to be one that's analytically focused, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which I honestly love talking about. I find it super interesting. Um, I think it's valuable to talk about those things, like what connects with an audience, because really at the end of the day, like analytics, views, likes, comments, all that engagement, there's a reason it exists. And, you know, I would, I would venture to say 90% of the time, those numbers are inflated relative to your old videos, relative to other things in your niche, because you made something that resonated, that taught, that inspired and so the outcome of that is those numbers. The problem we have is that we get tied to those numbers. Yes. And sometimes sometimes it is a, a decent metric to let you know, like, well, that idea actually didn't land as hard as you thought it would. Mm -hmm. Or it's completely wrong. You're just like, no, this is one of the best pieces of work I've made, and it just 
for some reason just didn't connect with the platform and how it pushes out and gets it into other people's recommended or you know whatever. Yep. I'm going down a I'm going down a a deep hole right now. This is great. This is, what we're, this is the <laughs> yeah. whole point of the episode. But I don't today. want to talk the whole time. I want to um, ask you, given what I what I just said, having done it for now a year and a half, two years. The, year run, and a half. the running channel. Yours. Mine. Your oh, channel. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Schultz uh, LLC uh, yeah. Incorporated. <laughs> yes. Dot com. YouTube. Dot com. <laughs> uh, I've taken my channel seriously for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I made YouTube videos during the height of 2020 because I needed something to entertain myself with. And at that point in time, I did not want to, quote, do YouTube or, quote, become a YouTuber. Uh, I just wanted to communicate to people and make videos about things that I was interested in. Uh, a lot of that stuff at that point in time was influenced a lot by my favorite channels that were much more video essay focused, like the nerd writer. Uh, I'm fascinated with that. And it's just yeah. a really cool way to learn online. I, I he's, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I really admired that style. So I did some of that kind of stuff in the beginning. Um, but it was really just a thing to kind of keep me entertained and stay creative during all of that while weddings were very up in the air and the whole world was up in the air since then didn't really make a ton of stuff consistently came back to winter of 2022 that's when the two of us and gene and brax more or less made a pact together and said hey we're going to do youtube together this year we're going to be on each other's team we're going to help each other with videos we're going to encourage each other read each other's scripts watch each other's videos like just be like an incubator more or less and help each other stay consistent with making stuff which was hugely motivational hugely helpful uh and honestly probably the only reason that i actually did it and stuck with it in the first place yeah. was having you guys around to always be there to assist, to bounce ideas off of, and to refine things until they were as close to perfect as possible, and then make the thing be okay with shipping it, even if it wasn't totally done, totally polished, mm -hmm. and learn from that process. Uh, that was one of the most educational processes I think I've ever been a part of. And the consistency the showing up mm -hmm. regularly, that seems to be the thing that breaks the camel, straw breaks the camel back on it for everyone. Yeah. That's the phrase? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> is, the, is consistency, absolutely, yeah. Now, it feels like it's really, I mean, and it is too. I was actually just talking with someone last night on Instagram. He's another YouTuber, Tristan, uh, who, yeah, struggles to find either motivation or struggles to find any will to make things when the market that we're in is so saturated. Yeah. Like you kind of just alluded to is yeah. like, it's so competitive. There's so many people regurgitating the same information about the same cameras, about the same techniques, this, that, the other over and over and over rinse and repeat. It can be so discouraging to actually want to do stuff when that's the case. And if you're doing it solo, oh my gosh, like self-motivating, self-starting to do that when that's what you're up against, it's like, why bother? Like that it makes so much sense why that would be the attitude for a lot of people. Um, and it reminded me like how fortunate we are to have each other here to be each other's accountability partners, to mm -hmm. actually show up, actually make stuff. You have someone who's showing up to help you on a production. Like you don't want to, you don't want to shortchange them or yourself. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to, you're going to bring your A game and be like, no, even if I'm not feeling it today, I'm going to make this video because two other people dropped their stuff to help me make this thing. So even if I'm not feeling it, I'm going to do it. And that is super valuable, like pushing through those uncomfortable moments or the times where you're just not, not in the right headspace for it, like challenging yourself to just like get through it and maybe make a video that ends up being mediocre and still publishing it. Like there is value in that. Absolutely. Like it might not have your stamp of approval. Like there's plenty of videos that I've made where I'm like, ah, it could have been like a little better, or like 10% better. Or could have done this thing differently. Mm -hmm. Still going through the process of publishing it and seeing it to the finish line is so, 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 so beneficial. Like, truly. No one makes perfect stuff all the time. Or ever, really. Like, to get perfect right is nearly impossible. Or even close to perfect. Even like close to a perfect. a realistic stab at what that means. Yeah. It's like, your, your form of perfect. Yeah. You're so dialed. This is the best. This is the best product I could... 
if you equate it to commercial work that you were doing for a company you were very excited to work with, you're not going to be putting that much effort into the YouTube video yep. all the time. You yep. might every once in a while, but 95% of the time you're not. And accepting that and still going out to make something, knowing what your capacity is, is, I mean, it is truly one of the most rewarding things I think I've done since being here. There are plenty of videos too where I'm like, I crushed it. Don't get me wrong. Like there, there are so many times where like I publish something, I'm like, this is one of the best ones that I've made so far. And I feel so good about it, really proud of it, fantastic. Everyone's gonna have those moments as well. But I think there is a matter of letting go of perfection, letting go of things being, like you said, perfect to whatever your personal standard might be and still seeing something through and putting it out there and learning from that process and applying what you learned to the next time to make it 1% better. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing is because you do, you do anything for a whole year, a handful of years, it's wild what your really messy stuff looks like to a multitude of people. Mm -hmm. And so with that being the case and you, like we just hung out with Kofuzi yesterday, big running YouTuber, we interviewed him for our doc, mm -hmm. very cool. He was talking to me about strategy on his channel, what he's doing. He used to be somebody that posted a video every single day mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now, production-wise, and comparatively to our world, much lower production value. And you have to if you're on that kind of frequency. Your GoPro, your cell phone, your like maybe small mirrorless camera, mm -hmm. and just making stuff that is like easy to edit within three to four hours and put out. And that exclusively being the thing you're doing is that it's just a different, a completely different approach. But recently he's been making way less, uh, way less videos and just much more robust stories of a whole weekend he'll spend in a city doing a race and seeing like, Oh, okay, this is interesting. Like, Less volume, but more intentionality could connect with the, my crowd, my people, so much more than just like drilling them in the head all the time, every single day with whatever is going on that day. For me, that has been the biggest revelation on the platform the past year and a half. Um, if we look at it analytically, I made half of the amount of stuff I did last year versus 2021. And at least ad revenue wise, made the same amount. Mm -hmm. uh, got way less views, got less subscribers, but had so many more opportunities and on the whole made so much more money mm -hmm. as a businessman. And I was like, well, <laughs> I guess it's a lie that everyone's saying you have to stick to this specific cadence of upload. Not to discredit that consistency matters, it absolutely does. Mm -hmm. You have to do it to be able to grow a channel, to mm -hmm. survive on the platform, to show up regularly so that you don't just fall into the abyss, mm -hmm. you know, and at least provide some sort of accountability for yourself and consistency for yourself that makes it sustainable eventually. Mm -hmm. But I'm in a season now with my main channel where it's like I've grown the thing to bigger than I ever imagined it would be grown to. And views have just kind of plateaued in a way where I'm like, oh, well, I'm not like super concerned about like doing the next enormous massive thing to get views, uh, but looking at it more as this is just a place for me to connect with people, mm -hmm. market myself more, market the things that I want to sell and how I want to help people in the creative world. Yeah. Yep. With that in mind, what do you think your main channel will look like in 2023? I kind of want to go back to the basics, to be honest. I want to go, I kind of want to strip it down, help beginners again. Mm. Um, there's going to be strategy based on the course that I've made, the classroom. Like it's going to be, it's going to still be a marketing machine for me and my brand. Mm -hmm. But I really just want to have fun, you know, making that kind of stuff. Yep. And now that I have Shua and I have you guys, like I just have a handful of people all the time that are willing and wanting to help. I have sponsors that are, stoked about the ideas that yep. I want to pursue. And I've just taken a while, like a month or two. It's, it wasn't, hasn't really necessarily been a sabbatical, but I've just taken time to really pour into the running channel because I'm just very excited about that right now. Mm -hmm. 
and it it's it's gone very very well. I mean, we've gone from like 250 subscribers to over at this point 6,000 um, in a matter of you know three or four months, and the majority of that just in the past month as we started this new marathon training block. But in that, I'm learning so much more about YouTube. Mm -hmm. I've never been this consistent. And the only reason I can be is because she was editing all the videos. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just directing them and starring in them. Man, that sounds like the most narcissistic. You're, dude. You're in them. Dude, <laughs> YouTube is the most narcissistic starring. garbage. <laughs> It's just like, man, look at me you, all the time. You have, you have to on your next video now have like an opening credit sequence of like, this is the title of the video, starring. <laughs> it just keeps going. Eric Floberg. Directed, directed by, by Eric Floberg. <laughs> I'm an everything, everything genius. genius. <laughs> Some people are creative geniuses. <laughs> and Jay Worsley is an everything genius. That's a direct quote from our friend Jay. <laughs> He's kidding. He's not that narcissistic. No, and he's, he's the humblest person yeah. ever. <laughs> he's very funny, too. Okay, wait, two thoughts occurred to me as you are saying that. One, going back to what you said about, I guess what we were talking about on the um, seeing progress and getting better at what you do, and tying this into what you said about going back to basics this year, a lot of your early stuff was basics. Yes. And I think we'd both agree you have grown tremendously since then from a production value standpoint. Yeah. Back when I like thought natural light was everything. Yeah. And audio didn't matter. Yeah, right. <laughs> Imagining that in 2023 yeah. with wh like what you've learned since then, how you've grown, kind of seems very cool to like take a lot of that and repurpose it, mm. add stuff to it that you've learned since then or techniques that you've improved since 2017, 2018, and then just doing it so much more beautifully and with such better sound. Yeah. It was fascinating to think about, to be able to like re reimagine That's really interesting. what you first did. Just look at all the old videos. Yeah. Just do the, Honestly, just like do remake some of them. <laughs> like you could if you wanted to. It's true. And it, what's interesting is like the majority of people that are subscribed to my channel and follow me now maybe have never seen some of those. Yeah. Which is really interesting. You could consider it a, um, a Roaring Twenties reboot of yeah. your old stuff. Yeah. Well, what's also super interesting about YouTube is that's like subscriber count just does, it just does not matter. Like my running channel that is one fiftieth of the size, mm -hmm. more, way more than that. I can't do math right now. <laughs> it's a lot smaller <laughs> is, is getting tw twice as many views as a month. That's wild right now. That's wild. Our last month we have gotten 200,000 views on the running channel as opposed to my main channel has only got 100,000. Granted, I haven't really been posting on the main channel, mm -mm. but it's it just goes to prove, like, if you're making stuff that people are interested in and get put in recommended, it's gonna, it's just gonna soar. Yeah. So I look at that too, and I'm like, well, I mean, what do you pursue then? Like, I want to pursue the things I'm passionate about at this mm -hmm. point, and I... I feel like I've given myself enough freedom to do that because I, you know, I have to be fair to myself and look at it and say, like, ha have I earned this? Mm. Have I earned being able to strictly just kind of make the stuff I want to make? Because at this point, the business is so diversified that I'm not, I'm not needing to, like, break my back trying to make more every mm -hmm. single year now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, I said it in the How Much I Made video. Like, I'm not super interested in making it anything bigger if I don't have to. Sure. Like, sure, I'm open to the idea of making more money or growing my business to be something bigger or better mm -hmm. and diversifying it more, but I'm not willing to sacrifice that at the expense of working more hours per week. Totally. No chance. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm now working 30 to 35 hours a week, and I want that to be the consistent amount of hours I work indefinitely because mm -hmm. gone are the days we just had a conversation about this the other day like gone are the days where i did 60 hour work weeks mm -hmm. and i did that for the first two years of building my channel mm -hmm. so you're you're kind of in that base building phase in right the building now right now yeah although that only is if i want to grow it to something that is big which do you? i don't know honestly i i do but i'm also really excited about all of the client facing and business building things that you and I and Gene are working on this yeah. year. 
it's not as much of a priority for me to grow it to like a hundred thousand subscribers and yeah. make more of my living off of that because I'm frankly just much more interested in the other things that we're creating because those are much more robust and long-term stable proper businesses that don't even deal with the almost comparatively pettiness of like AdSense and sponsored yes, videos yes. and stuff, you know, where it's just Wait, like, pause though. You did use my word robust. Have you I'm noticed? sorry. Did you trademark robust? Did you, I just, there are a few, you, <laughs> you, you say robust a lot. No, no, you really, you don't recognize it. No. Yeah. I say, I say like a handful of words way too much these days. Give me the five of them. You said you, you did five. What five? I don't know if it's five. Okay. What three diversify. Oh, you do say that one a lot. Yeah, for sure. Robust. Okay. Um, intrinsic. <laughs> intrinsic? I feel like intrinsic motivation. Do I, I don't know if I've ever... That may be the first time I've heard you say that word. Juxtaposition, I say. <laughs> now you're trolling me. I'm not kidding. Are you being serious right now? Yeah, you never hear me say these words. I don't think I honestly. I guess it's I've just heard like you say juxtaposition. I don't think I've heard you. I literally don't think I've ever heard you say intrinsic before. Intrinsically motivated is a. Is, okay, yeah. Well, I really believe in that. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like if anybody's just looking for clout, that's just the opposite of intrinsic ah, motivation. Okay. 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 Um, this one not as much amalgamation. They're bad. First time I've ever heard you say that. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong about this. I just figured I would bring up some of these words and to be like, yeah, you do always say that. You got me with uh, with diversify for sure. There, okay, as we keep talking, another one will come up and okay. I'll be like, that's another one. Okay. And then we're going to go. Yeah, I feel like. And yes, we're going to go. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hit the air horn. Be like, if I say it, be like, yeah, it's really robust. Okay. The amalgamation of my. Wait, the record scratch into the air horn. <laughs> That's fun. I'm so sorry. Okay. You're right. That is fun. That is right. It's great, and it's all multicolored. And stuff. I'm so sorry. Oh. I went. I went totally off the rails there. <laughs> Diversify. Um, I'm gonna try to use all five of those words before the end of this okay. episode now. But, um, the, but yeah, you're touching on a point that I think is so important about yeah. YouTube and our buddy Levi, who we are looking to do a whole lot of work with this upcoming year, hopefully, like yep. in a. Who knows how that's going to shake out? Yes. He's really interested in starting YouTube. Mm -hmm. He has a newsletter. Um, let's link it down below because yes. yep. he's going to go from, he just got laid off of his 200K plus salary paying job um, just a month ago and is now basically building from zero back to that salary for himself within a year. That's his goal. And we are going to be a big part of that alongside him. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he building is, things with him. He is our business partner. We love him very much. Check out his new seller below, um, for sure. But something he has said recently is just like, I, the, to going back to the perfectionism stuff, Yeah, he said, one of my goals this year is to be more cringe. Yes. And he clarified that <laughs> by saying, I don't necessarily want to make cringy things, but I want to be more true to myself and not care what other people think about that. Well, most of the time when you think you are being cringe, that is not perceived as cringy to other people. Most of the time. Most of the time. Yeah. Obviously, there's a form of self-awareness there. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, that is, yeah, yeah, yeah the, you're right about is, that. There right. is, well, self-awareness is one of the biggest things in YouTube. If you're not able to, in a healthy way, compare yourself to what else is out there yeah. and how you are perceived, that could be a matter of success or failure. Yeah. If you are just... Yeah constantly doing this for 10 years straight and you're seeing no growth and no traction, it's not giving you opportunities. Mm -hmm. Like you have to look in the mirror and say, is this worth it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it makes me really sad to see a lot of people listen to the gurus and be like, you have to make 500 videos before you're even good. I'm like, yeah. that's not true. I feel that. That is not true. Like you could make, you could make 25 videos and have a million subscribers. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a unicorn of a person, but you have to balance all these things that people say online. Yeah. Like Mr. Beast infamously says, like, make a hundred videos before you can even think about getting views. I get that sentiment, mm -hmm. but I've made like 150 videos on my main channel mm -hmm. and I have 150,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. It's like, 
That's not necessarily true. Some of my first videos got tens of thousands of views because they connected and taught and resonated and were shared on blogs and all these things. And I think sometimes, like, depending on who you're listening to, there can be just this one-lane attitude of, like, this is how YouTube is done. This is how you get to a million subscribers. This is how you get all the enormous brand deals mm -hmm. where we're talking about, you know, this banking card you can work with, you know, mm -hmm. this game, at mobile app game. That's It's just a different world. Yes. And we're not pursuing that world. Not even a little bit. Yeah. No, that, that's never on our radar, honestly. I imagine the other thing that people lack, it ties in with self-awareness, more like flipping that on its head, is like understanding context and appreciating what other YouTubers have been through. Because mm -hmm. I feel like Mr. Beast was in that camp where he literally probably did make 100 videos and mm -hmm. no one cared about him because he was a kid in his bedroom. Right. And nothing stuck until he said Logan Paul's name a million a times or whatever. Times. Yeah, 100,000 times. You know, like, like for him, like he's speaking from a place of of intimacy yeah. where like, this is what I did. This is why I'm passionate about it because this is what I literally went through to get to where I am. And that's, that's fair to share that advice and that story for him, like to say that totally valid. Cause that's his experience. But what people listening to that might not realize is like, Oh, I'm not in the same boat as him. I don't even want the same things as him. Yeah. And I don't, I'm not going to go about it in the same way. Like yeah. you need the context of like what that person has been through and what their goals were and see if you identify with the boat that they were in. Mm -hmm. And then if that is the case, sure, listen to them. But if not, don't, because that's not a formula that most people can replicate. And yeah. odds are, if you try, that is cringe, literally. Just yeah. to rip someone's style, yes. just to get to that place that they're in is like, no, 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 like he did that because that was something that he was super passionate about. He paved the way for that genre. Like that is who he is. Don't just copy it. Don't just copy it. Absolutely not. We saw that in the Casey Neistat era, it's too. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. <laughs> like, <laughs> self-awareness. Know yourself, know the context of others, figure out how that works together. That kind of rhymed. To, ooh. Okay, go I'll ahead. I can't remember what it was, but I'll listen back to you it You need later. to start a rap channel. Nope. <laughs> I wish Chad could hear the sound effects that we're playing <laughs> hey, now. Oh my word! Okay, I don't really know how to wrap this conversation up. It's I don't. Been, I don't want to. I just I push. Either. I just push my meeting thirty minutes. Oh, excellent. Yeah, okay, great. I, it's, it's really great. It's I'm liking this a lot. Yeah, that's why I awkwardly just texted. <laughs> well, that's another component <laughs> I want to talk about. I have a virtual assistant, and like, we're we we jump on a call every day, mm -hmm. and. That between that and Shua gives me, because this is a constant question people are asking me, how do you balance it all? When I'm sure now that I'm saying like, I only work 30, 35 hours a week, people are like, how? Yeah. Um, maybe it makes more sense now because I'm not just like putting as much into the world as I have in months and years past. Right. But it's just systems, revenue streams, mm -hmm. and help from other people mm -hmm. between uh, between Sammy and Shua yep. and all of you guys helping me in the studio and us helping each other, it gives me the ability to sit down and do a podcast episode and do a running video the next day and then another one for my main channel and still be working on commercial work, taking weddings here and there. Like, it does give me the ability. That's the only way I can do it. Right. If, Sh if Shua was not here, if I didn't have a virtual assistant, like, I wouldn't be able. And this is another good context yes. situation. People need to understand your context mm -hmm. to know what it actually takes to do what you do. It's not just you. Mm -hmm. It's you in a studio full of people with a full-time editor and a virtual assistant. Yeah. So when people look at you and they're like, how does one person do all this? They the don't. answer is they don't. Like yeah. it's, it's not possible. Like there are there are people I know on YouTube that have a forward-facing personality of like, this is just me. Yeah. And it's perceived that way. Yeah. But there's a team of 20 people working behind the scenes. Right. And they're getting millions of views. And you're like, well, yeah, because they are their own news organization. Right. They are their own production house. I f recently, I feel like we learned that about Johnny Harris. I was For a, just trying not to say okay. his name. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I know it's, we can talk about that, though. Oh, I think okay. that's totally fine, because like, I absolutely love his videos. Yeah. He's fantastic. And for a long time, I did think, like, how does this guy just do it on his own? And he has, like, I think it is like close to 20 people yeah. that help him on those things, mm -hmm. which makes sense, because they are so high production. Yes so informational, mm -hmm. so well-researched, like, of course, of course there's going to be other people working on that. Like, 
it, it feels unfair to like try to mask that in any capacity because like again just like setting realistic expectations for people looking from the outside in it's like oh my gosh how do you do this i gotta work harder hustle more blah 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 blah, blah. it's like no there's there's a, there's a team of people working on this thing yeah and they worked up to that yes the, my business has existed for over a decade yep I've been pursuing YouTube for almost six years. Yep. It is a slow burn. It's a slow burn, baby. Hey, OGs, no. <laughs> and th I think that is the most consistent and sustainable. Ah, you're right on that one way too. Yeah. Okay. To, yeah. Yep. Uh, to approach it. Yep. Like that is, if we're if we're going to talk to an audience at large looking to pursue making videos on the platform of YouTube. I think that's the best advice. Yes. Like do not rush into it. Uh -huh. Build slowly. Yeah. Be consistent at, as consistent as you can given your life circumstances, which mm -hmm. honestly, if you're pursuing it unabashedly with no other job, I don't know about that. Like that's a pretty dangerous way to go about it. Don't do that. You know, it's like, Cause you hear stories of, and no, no shade on them, you know, like someone like Eric who just like abandons everything to fully just do YouTube yep. and like drain the bank account and on a hope and a prayer that it works. And I think what's really unfortunate is that so many people see those stories cause those are the only stories that are told and they're not seeing the ones where someone tried to do that and now they had to move back in with their parents yep. and they abandon YouTube completely yep. are now doing a career they weren't wanting to do and maybe are trapped back in that feedback loop that they wanted to get out of. Yeah. Yep. And it, it, it's a one in a million case yeah. for, for Eric and for people similar to that. It's like, that's not, that is not the median of YouTube. That is the far outlier. Mm -hmm. um, other examples of that too, just to go back to the Johnny Harris example, like Colin Smear also yep. been at it for over a decade. Long time. Over a decade, they started doing lacrosse stuff yeah. to get into the YouTube world. Mm -hmm. They got to a point where they almost quit. Mm -hmm. Like they had technically quit. Like they called each other. It was like, yo, we're, we, we, we got to be done with this. And then in since that time, which I believe was two years ago now, they have grown their channel to over a million subscribers, interviewed the top creators on YouTube and, and beyond, beyond that. Like they, they have gotten into a different world and they have a team of people working with them mm -hmm. and they've expanded things at a slow pace and in a way that feels completely on brand with them. They have their main channel. They have a, a second channel for fun videos. They've got a wonderful podcast that they have and they just opened up a second show, but they're scaling things in a way that makes sense to them and makes sense with the amount of resources that they have available to them, which is fantastic because they're just doing more things that feel true to them. Mm -hmm and they have the right support systems in place to sustain it. And now it looks like, oh, I see the vision for this thing, and it's just going to keep like exponentially growing over probably another decade yeah. at least, yeah. and then into other things inevitably yeah. from then. And then you see people, one last example, like Rhett and Link, yeah. who have been at it for, like they are like OGs years. of YouTube. Yeah. And they have, and Colin and Samir did a huge deep dive like studio tour video with them and interviewed them and everything on their show. And that's where I learned like just how huge their show is and how many shows they have and seeing their production spaces and everything. And they, I, I can't remember the number exactly, but it's like tens of millions of dollars a year in revenue mm -hmm. kind of thing. And that started on YouTube and now it's legitimately like its own, like new, like not news, but like its own media network. Mm -hmm. And it started on YouTube. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. They had the vision for that and scaled it into a business that does not rely on YouTube. Right. Well, to a certain capacity. It, it does, but it's like again, it's it's marketing machine. Yeah, it, exactly. It's like they're not they're not paying everyone with AdSense. Right. They're paying because they have like legitimate business deals in place, and they have it, they've just scaled it properly. And another example, Sarah Dici, when she got her shout out from uh, Casey. Oh yeah. She made a Casey parody video. Yep. He shouted her out, and I feel like it's often when a large, large creator does that for someone else, it's incredibly hard to then maintain that audience yeah. or to move forward and to form your own voice. That's and, true. And she's yeah. really, really done that over the past half decade. And again, another slow burn. Like she just crossed, I think, 900,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, just chipping away. Like, I think she interviewed Zuckerberg 
Yeah. Yeah. Just like all sorts of crazy cool opportunities and stuff. Um, I, I know we can think of examples mm-hmm. like that. Mark Rober is another one I think of. You know, just like Mark has Brownlee. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's really interesting now to see these people who have approached it for five to ten years and built something that is akin to what traditional media was before. Yes. Um, but let's circle back to what I so rudely interrupted oh. with my own quip. What was that? Is what, do you, what do you want to do? Like, oh. What do you want to do with your channel? Like, What is the future of it? Do you see, do you see your own brand turning into something that has, even on a smaller scale like what I have right now with an employee and an assistant, building a team, or is this something that's just like, this is your project and then maybe it extends into something completely different after that? Or is it only going to be community-based moving forward? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I'm trying to organize my thoughts on that still yeah. right now. And there's um, no, an- you don't have to have an answer right now. Yeah, honestly, I just like making videos about things that I'm interested in. And if that can help me become a better overall communicator, excellent. If it gets me connected to other brands, and biz, like business opportunities outside of YouTube, that's fantastic too. Um, I really see it more as a a portfolio. I think um, it's a, like the the process of making videos has made me a better filmmaker, better writer, better storyteller. It's just maybe better at what I do for all the client facing things that we do, and for all of the things that we create on our own that are maybe education based or mm-hmm. business based, like whatever it is, like things that are completely outside of YouTube. And then there's just the joy that I get from making videos about things that I care about too. Like it's just it's fun. Yeah. Um, if I could scale it to something like where I've got you know a tidy hundred thousand subscribers, that'd be cool. Like I, I'd like to hit that milestone maybe. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. I don't have any desire to really go like much further than that to be perfectly honest because I don't think it's going to be the thing that I put my lion's share of time into right now at least. Because there's other opportunities that, in my head, if I invest in those now, because they're presenting themselves now, those things will give me the financial freedom to make videos about whatever the heck I want, yeah. the things that I most love, most care about, mm-hmm. and that will probably most resonate with other people. And then I'm not beholden to YouTube and churning out things that I don't really care about, but I kind of need to make just so I can stay consistent, stay relevant, whatever it is. And then I'm making my best work, and I think that's when the real influx of subscribers will come. Like when I'm making short films or narrative pieces or things that I like truly, truly love. Like I, I really want to tackle something like ever since we saw uh, Sayers, um, Los LA, Angeles on film. On, yeah, that, yeah, that is just perfect. It's Italy on film one too was just like gorgeous. Those are the types of things that I like yeah. um, and that I want to make. So. I think it's just a matter of like getting to that point. I'm also okay with, for the time being, like just making stuff to get it out because I do like that to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I'm not, I'm not solely invested in YouTube yeah. right now. And frankly, I don't even know if it's possible for people within this space to scale it to something that you'd see like, you know, Daniel and Rachel or Peter McKinnon do. I don't even think it's possible anymore. Yeah, it feels like it's so spread thin, yeah. and that's okay because it it just offer so many other opportunities. There are outliers for sure. I think someone like Brady Bissett, like mm-hmm. who grew his channel very quickly. Um, but for for me, what I the huge revelation I've had over the past six months is like I really want to be formulating my YouTube channels into a commentary of a skill set or skills that I am actively doing in life. Yes. Yeah. And I don't like I'm pretty sick of the the meta approach of just like here's this thing and I'm going to talk about it and then give like a few points on it. And then, you know, and it's like rinse, recycle, repeat. Mm -hmm. Um, I've felt really burned by that kind of stuff. Like here are the five tips. Here's the thing. Here's the da da da. And I'm just sitting down and I'm talking to a camera. Like I personally now just want to see, I want to, challenge myself to become a better artist in other disciplines yeah. and using the skills I have in photography and filmmaking and maybe other artistic disciplines like music and really trying to flex those muscles. Something just that inspired me so much was inside by Bo Burnham. Mm-hmm. 
And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that proved to me like you you have a lot of these skills. I'm I'm not as good in really any of them, <laughs> but seeing some of myself in those bits, those songs, those filmmaking techniques, those talking heads, those jokes. Uh, I think there's just so much more. And I think because of that, when I really do pursue that super hard, I think that's what's honestly going to like really revive my channel in a significant way, mm -hmm. that it's not plateauing really anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't really care if it continues to plateau, even if I do that. I just want to do more of that moving forward. Yep, yeah. The examples on a personal level that I, I give when we talk about this is people like, Willem Verbeek and Kyle McDougall, because to me, I don't see them, and maybe they don't see themselves as this either, but I imagine them as photographers who use YouTube to communicate the work yes. that they create in the world. Yeah. They're photographers first and foremost, yeah. because the work that they make is phenomenal, and at least from what I can understand, that's how they make their living mm -hmm. as well, and YouTube is supplemental mm -hmm. to that. It's not everything but it's just another way for them to share their work, point people back to the work they're creating in the world that has nothing to do with YouTube, and then also teach people along the way. Give inspiration, give hope to people, help them understand things, educate them. That, that really is like what I want more than anything, where it's less about being a personality that people mm -hmm. want to come back yes. to. Infusing personality into it, sure. totally, but not that, not being the only reason yeah. like I, I i love like photography is it like and i want to be known for that at least right now mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like youtube is i mean it's the best search engine so get your stuff on there use it as a way to show off the work that you're proud of what you're creating and i think that's probably the best mindset for most people in our shoes to go about starting a channel or growing a channel right now yeah i think a lot of people uh, will complain about like, how does that person get that many views for just sitting there and talking about X, Y, Z? And you're like, because they, they're they so good at it. Mm -hmm. Like the work is speaking for itself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they can just sit there and talk about it. And people will sit and listen because they are a master at that craft, at that thing, at that art. And... It goes back to self-awareness, just like, okay, well, if you're expecting that you can just sit down and do that and get the same response from people, you need to do a check on yourself and recognize, am I a master at this topic? Um, maybe not, you know? And so what are you going to do to practice that discipline to work towards being a master of that discipline, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's ultimately what all of us artists are searching for, all of us creative people are yearning for is mastery of that. And your one of your favorite phrases? Oh, um, jack of all trades and a master of none. And, yeah. And that is like, it's so easy to fall into that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to just be like, I'm just going to do this, that, the other, all the other things to whatever's trendy, whatever, blah, 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 you know, and you can get lost in the sauce and... There's like no voice, there's no artistry. And if you're strictly going for the algorithm, going for the views, going for the growth, going for the subs, like that's just, it's a pretty empty pursuit at the end of the day. Yep. And you're not gonna wanna continue to do it. And then you're gonna look at like a house of cards that's fallen to the ground by the end of it. Yep. Yeah. I like this topic. That was a great conversation. That was, that was really nice. Wow, that felt therapeutic. It was. Yeah, it, yeah, that was good. It, it really helps solidify what you, like what you want to do moving forward. Um, and at the core of this, at least I want to say before we close out, is like there has to be meaning and purpose and philosophy behind the stuff that you say and put out into the world. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be some sort of bedrock and foundation of like what you believe and what you want to communicate. Because like I said, just going after trendy stuff or things that you think are going to get clicks, likes, views, that will leave you feeling very empty. Yep. By the end of the pursuit, you will step away being like, what am I? Yep. I'm just an empty box that's just producing content 
that's falling on ears that aren't consistent Mm -hmm. and like it's not like truly affecting people it's just like this cyclical tiktok ish like consume consume roll through next 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 and like what kind of value is it really putting into the world Mm -hmm. yeah have a voice Mm -hmm. find your voice Dang. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. Do I say dang a lot? No, I just wanted to do a sound effect. <laughs> oh, I probably should have done this one. <laughs> no, that would have been insulting. I'm sorry. Uh, wow, no, that was a really good conversation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Listening, watching, wherever you are embracing this episode. Hugging this episode. I don't know why I said embracing. <laughs> but uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below telling us what your thoughts on YouTube and the consistency of creating things looks like for you. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, any of the streaming services, uh, maybe you could leave us a rating and a little bit of a review. Say hi. If you're stuck around to the end of this episode, uh, maybe... Uh, Maybe maybe you could uh, leave a review and just say scatter batter. Uh, just just to know it. that we... I was going to say j- that just, <laughs> just so you knew, so we know that you made it to the ending of the show. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for supporting everything that we're up to. Uh, we hope you're all having a great day and we'll check back in with you next week. See you, cappers. <laughs> <laughs> what rhymes with cappers? Tappers. Tappers, cappers. It sounds like a bad There's bar. no verb. There's no bar. There's uh, no verb with that. Rappers, cappers? No? It's just two nouns again. Is there a... Probably not. Oof. No. Nope. L- later. Okay, bye. Skater. <laughs>